learning more about a mass shooting. One man killed, six people still hospitalized. That shooting happened at the same time Mayor Brandon Scott and Governor Larry Hogan joined the U.S. Attorney from Maryland to announce new crime-fighting initiatives in Baltimore. Tonight, Fox 45's Mackenzie Frost is hearing from heartbroken families as police are still searching for the suspects. The scene on Thursday remained empty as police continue with the investigation. We also reviewed surveillance video from a convenience store located across the street from the shooting. We're not going to show you the entire video, but it does show a scene full of chaos and another example of brazen crime in Baltimore. It's sunny at the corner of Shirley and Park Heights Avenue. Quiet as police keep watch, but emotions are high. <laughs> As the family of one of the men who was shot and killed at this same spot less than 24 hours earlier tries to understand what happened. Just one day prior, this scene playing out. Surveillance video from across the street shows the silver Ford or Lexus police are looking for. The car stops, and moments later, the group of people start running as shots ring out. The victims range in age from 22 to 70 years old. Police Commissioner Michael Harrison on scene after the mass shooting. Once again, right after noon, in broad daylight, the brazenness of these offenders to pull up, get out of a car, and then open fire on a group of people minding their own business. Now, the community looking for answers. Doesn't make sense, though. It just, it just doesn't make sense at all. They shot all old heads that wasn't doing nothing but playing cards and dominoes. And that's crazy that you can't even sit down and enjoy yourself now. That's crazy. The brazenness of the shooting, just the latest example of Baltimore's bloodshed getting bolder. And it doesn't matter whether it's daytime or nighttime anymore. They are getting the clear message that there are no consequences for their conduct. Former local and federal prosecutor Theru Vignaraja says criminals are pushing the boundaries about what they can get away with. Whether it's squeegee boys or shootings, this city has now become the wild, wild west. In the corner, usually filled with people, just last summer, a snowball stand set up. And now, empty chairs and an empty lot. Crime scene tape remains as a reminder of one of Baltimore's latest homicide scenes, leaving families and friends broken. They like my brother, and he's fighting for his life. Looking for answers about how this happened and wondering when Baltimore will become a safer place to live. The shooting did take place in a safe streets catchment zone just blocks away from the Park Heights location. We also saw some members of the safe streets location on scene talking to family members who have been impacted by this shooting. In the meantime, the police have yet to release any suspect information or motive. In Baltimore, Mackenzie Frost, Fox 45 News. This is one of many mass shootings this year in May, where there were two mass shootings within hours of each other. The first was in East Baltimore, where four people were shot. One of them died. Police say someone with an assault rifle fired more than 60 rounds at a crowd. In fact, so many shots were fired in that incident. Police ran out of evidence marker. Hours later, another mass shooting took place. This one in Park Heights. Police say five people, including a juvenile, were hurt when two groups of people got into a fight that ended with shots being fired. Well, murders and shootings are way up this year in Baltimore. The city has seen 235 murders so far, compared to 218 at this point last year. 490 people have been shot and survived. There had been 438 similar shootings in 2021. Yesterday, we asked Mayor Brandon Scott about the violence. He and other city leaders say his crime plan is working. Why should the people of Baltimore look at this and see you and trust you to say that this really will make a difference? Yeah, uh, because what you would say is that one, Mackenzie, what I'll say is this. Uh, our police department has taken 1,600 weapons off the street this year. That's more of any year in that time in recent memory. That's more than in 2014 when we had 500, 600 more police officers. The work is being done each and every day. We've made more arrests today than this same time last year. Public safety is the mayor's number one priority. Well, it is not just murders and shootings up this year. Carjackings are up 51% year to date. Convenience store robberies up 290%. Aggravated assaults up 4%. Overall, violent crime is up 15%. And that brings us to our question of the day. Do you think Mayor Brandon Scott 
is taking the crime crisis seriously enough. So far, 97% of those who have voted say no. You can head to foxbaltimore.com slash vote to weigh in. While the Park Heights community mourns the victim in yesterday's mass shooting, the Canton neighborhood is mourning a beloved community member there. He was attacked outside his home and died two days later. Tonight, his family prepares to lay him in the rest, and the killer is still on the loose. Fox 45's Maxine Stryker has their story. Well, here in Canton, outside of St. Casimir's Church, where Victor attended, a sign now in his memory at the garden in which he cared for. Tonight, police tell us they have active leads, but no arrests have been made as his family and friends continue to search for answers. Days after a violent attack took the life of 60-year-old Victor Malabalabus, the shock hasn't worn off. This belief could have been any of us. That's really makes me on edge. It's hard for us to, to wrap our heads around it. Friends and neighbors remain stunned that Victor's life was taken so carelessly in the middle of the day Saturday in Canton. He's one in a million, I would say. And uh, he, he would be sorely missed. Napoleon Kermang, a close friend of Victor's from the Philippine Merchant Marine Academy, says he was a generous and kind man and a loving father. He is a very, very giving person. And unfortunately, that's what did in him, is that he gave somebody a tissue. Police say Victor was giving the suspect a tissue when the attack occurred. Surveillance video we watched shows the suspect pulling Malabalabus down his own stairs before he appeared to take his wallet and take off. It's really very hard for us that uh, his uh, kindness was the one who, uh, that, uh, that took him out of this world. Kerming says while Victor's family begins to heal, one thing that will help is justice. Knowing Victor, he, he probably, uh, he, he is a forgiving guy and so forth. But the thing is that justice has to be served. A viewing is taking place right now and a funeral mass will be held here tomorrow at St. Casimir. If you have any information, you are urged to call homicide detectives or Metro Crime Stoppers at 1-866-7-LOCKUP. In Canton, Maxine Stryker, Fox 45 News. We have an update right now on the case of another recent murder victim, Baltimore restaurant and business owner Trevor White. The reward for information leading to an arrest in his case has now been increased to $18,000 because of a private escrow fund set up on behalf of White. White was killed back in June, just steps outside of his northeast Baltimore home. Fox 45 News will continue to tell the stories of victims and demand answers from elected leaders for the crime crisis in Baltimore. You can follow along on air and also on our website, foxbaltimore.com. Turning now to the crisis in the classroom. Last year saw several massive fights in classrooms in Baltimore City and Baltimore County schools. Fox 45 News obtained video of several of those fights and heard from several families concerned about their children's safety. Well, tonight, four days before the first day of school, City Council held a hearing on safety within Baltimore City Public Schools, but they didn't spend much time talking about security. They didn't stop Fox 45 News from pressing for answers on school safety. Keith Daniels questioned city and school leaders. He joins us live now with a look at what happened. Keith. Well, Riel, it was a committee hearing pitched as being an opportunity for council members to focus on school safety, but tonight, not much discussion about one key issue. At the Baltimore City Council Chamber, the Council's Education Workforce and Youth Committee holding a hearing, telling the public members will be briefed on city school safety from city agencies. Also saying there will be questions regarding current school safety measures and what future steps will be taken to keep students and staff safe. Concern over school safety after several incidents last year, including fights, stabbings, and handguns recovered in schools from students and visitors. But despite the discovery of those guns, tonight, after more than a two-hour hearing, no questions about guns found inside schools. We didn't hear much about guns. Well, that will be probably at the next hearing. We, we're going to talk about guns in school. I, I'm going to bring it up. 
but I wanted more to get the information out about the agencies. In May, after violent incidents at schools, including two students hurt and another arrested after a stabbing at Mervo High School and guns found at other campuses, school officials implemented a new metal detector policy at schools, which resulted in huge lines in the mornings for some students. Still tonight, no mention of weapons from the committee or school officials. So we press school CEO Dr. Sonia Santelises on the issue. No one really talked about guns. Well, we did talk about screening, right? So if you remember back in the spring, all those lines. right, all those lines, we're working on reducing those lines. In the end, one key question and answer for parents. But yes, um, parents should know that schools are safe. Well, Sergeant Clyde Boatwright, the police union's president, says he's urging, or rather he's hoping, that school officials will urge state lawmakers to change the law now that prevents his officers from being armed in city schools. He says it's vital that his officers be armed as part of the safety for students and staff. Reporting tonight, Keith Daniels, Fox 45 News. The city leaders not saying much about school safety, despite several examples of uh, violence in Baltimore classrooms last year. First, Patterson High School was put on lockdown because of a fight involving multiple students. Then weeks later, police say Mervo High School students stabbed two of his classmates during a fight. Both students were taken to a hospital. The suspect was arrested. And just days after that, a girl was hurt in a fight in Federal Hills Digital Harbor High School. Along with the fights, nearly 20 guns were taken from students on school property in the city last school year. You can find an interactive map of marking all of those incidents on our website at foxbaltimore.com. Now, this isn't the first time City Council has held a hearing about an issue involving Baltimore City Schools without addressing bigger problems. After Project Baltimore uncovered grade changing and ghost students at Augusta Fell Savage High School, the council held a hearing to get more information from city school CEO Dr. Sonia Santelises, but Augusta Fells hardly came up during that meeting. 